Boker Tov, good morning. Today is Friday, May, 9, May 20th, Erev Shabbat Parshat Bahar, and the um, topic of the parsha, and the significant component of the parsha, a very large parsha, is Shemitah. We haven't focused much attention on Shemitah, I have to admit, this past year. It is a Shemitah year. It's a sabbatical year in Israel, um, and um, always an opportunity to learn a lot about the land of Israel, um, about um, how indeed a modern state deals with the rule that requires that the land lie fallow, starting with the 19th century attempts uh, to, to, when, when indeed it was uh, the issue, the new settlement was struggling to survive every minute, and uh, the ways in which uh, one, one faces the rules of Shemitah, works around the rules of Shemitah, um, Shemitah not being a Torah obligation when there is no Jubilee year, and there is no Jubilee year, so it's a little bit more lenient. Uh, 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 approaches that are used. It's worth your going online, finding written material and shiurim and, 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 and uh, classes that talk about so much of this. It's a rich and important conversation and a uh, way to educate ourselves. It's a shame that we didn't uh, raise it already around Rosh Hashanah as the Shemitah year began. Um, I want to focus more specifically on one, around one element, which is an essential piece here, and that is um, food insecurity. Food insecurity. That's an interesting phrase that has become more commonplace um, to, in, in, the, in the parlance around uh, feeding people than it used to be. It used to be just around poverty, um, you know, starvation would be a strong word, right? That's, uh, that's certainly where you go. But food insecurity became a term that um, is more regularly used and, and we're talking about providing assistance to people with, with, their, with food needs around insecurity, and I tell you that that really is a phrase that I had never noticed until I read the Parsha again this year, that's kind of sitting there. The Torah says <coughs> in 2519, 20, 25, and the land will give forth its fruit, and you will eat in, uh, to your fill. And you will live securely in the land. Now that might be just the idyllic picture of Israel in a time when everything's going right and we don't have enemies threatening us. Halavai, we should not, not uh, we should we should experience that, right? Um, betach security has to do with, of course, the enemies around about us. But I uh, wonder, in this context, are we talking about that? We're we talking about food security. Wow, because that's the topic of the conversation. And listen to the next verse. Vechitamru and what and if you shall say manochal bashana hashiviit what shall we eat in the seventh year? Hein lo nizra b'lona sobat vuatenu. Look, we're not seeding and we're not doing any of the uh, the the um, uh, caring for the land and we're not gathering uh, a, a, a harvesting um, the produce of our produce from the land. So that's a really reasonable fear and a worry. What are we gonna eat? The Tziviti, God says in response, the Tziviti et lachem, I will command my bracha to you. It's fascinating, right? God, what is it? What is it what, how does God command his bracha? Bashana hashishit, in the sixth year it'll happen. And it will um, make its produce happen for three years. God commands the land, it seems, to provide bracha. The bracha is in the form of uh, such an abundance of food uh, that it will be enough for the sixth year itself and the seventh year and into the eighth year because the eighth year is also going to be a challenge until um, the, the, what you plant in, until and care for and then harvest on the other, uh, you know, happens in the eighth year. You're going to have months when you are gonna would have relied on the previous year's produce, but there is no previous year produce, right? So that's, that's God's promise. That I will, I will take care of it for you. So what happens then? It's all a matter of psychology. It's what happens in your head, what happens in your heart, what happens in your soul. How do you live? I mean, I guess uh, once you're in the sixth year, and, 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 and I'll clarify. Once you're in the sixth year, and, and indeed God's bracha happens, uh, and you have three years of produce, then you, all you have to really be doing at that point is managing your supplies. Do what Yosef did in Egypt, right? You have food for three years, 
let's figure out how to, uh, to, 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 to care for it so that in this year and the next year and the, and the year after, it's still there. We, we, we portion it out. So that has to do with good planning, good planning. But, you know, this question that's asked is not just asked in the sixth year. It's asked in the first, second year. Anybody who stops and thinks about it and, and people have short memories, and there's an anxiety that's described here. This is an anxiety. Uh, and, and the psychology really does affect so much. It even affects the economy. Of course, that the essence of an economy um, and, and uh, you know, and, and happens, relates significantly to what people believe is going on. So we have, at least the claim is, right? I don't, I'm, I'm not an, an economist at all, um, but we have what is claimed to be a very strong economy, but um, maybe over supercharged, whatever that means, right? And, um, and once people start to have less faith in the economy, the economy then starts to suffer. So we need to be able to talk about that in that sense. But if we move it away from that collective and just to the individual, we realize once and again that um, people can, can, can be in angst whether or not uh, the reality aligns with it. And food insecurity might work that way. I had a really interesting conversation with someone who um, helps manage the kosher Meals on Wheels in Westchester. And I asked, you know, what are the criteria that you use? How much money or income or assets, you know, would, would, would either render you, um, if you're below the number, or, you know, a, a candidate or beyond the number or not a candidate for Meals on Wheels? And um, he kind of said the term that we're using is food insecurity. And a lot has to do food insecurity with the person's mindset, the person's mindset whether they feel secure or not, whether they, they're managing to pull the, to, to, to make the meals, they have the money for it, but they're making the meals or not. So I actually will tell you, if you know of people that would fit that criteria that you worry about or that you feel could use the support, reach out to me and I'll help uh, connect you to the Kosher Meals on Wheels. Let's run through WJCS. Beyond that, we think about the, the broader needs that are existing uh, on the planet, we can start with Westchester, feeding Westchester. We can think about Israel, feeding Israel. Such agencies do exist. There is a feeding Westchester agency. And a lot of what they're doing is, to, is a recognition. God's bracha, here's the last point I'm going to make. God's bracha is there. There is sufficient food for this year and the next and the next. That's how it's going to work. But uh, the problem is that it's not accessed by everybody. For whatever reason we want to say, um, it's just not accessed by everybody. And so it's part of our obligation, our obligation to help ensure that people can have re a, re a reality of security and, and an emo a, a mental state of security and reality of food security. Every single person around because the food is there. It's on the planet and it's here in the Westchester area. Um, whatever you can do and rethink this yourself. You think about your charities. One of them should be to help ensure that no one should, should uh, feel needy of food in the moment or the or, or on the morrow or for the year ahead um that's part of this the, the mentality that god put into the into our our thinking and our experience through the rules of shemitah um may uh, god make and give us all that we need may supply chains continue to uh to be repaired may baby formula be uh, plentiful again that's a different problem um and may we help ensure that everybody has what they need and feels that they have what they need as well. Wishing you a Shabbat Shalom.